Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales of the Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Useless Rocks, written by na 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 catman A Ladrail Sars de Sidassi rode through the town, her elven features drawing stares from the few who were out at the same time. She looked around at all the things that had changed since her last visit and all the things that hadn't. The signboards had all changed. She didn't recognize any of her old haunts. A few hidden nooks that she had found had disappeared, and unknown dark alleys had taken their place. On the other hand, it was still a sleepy little hamlet she remembered, still surrounded by miles of farmland, and old man Jenkins Scarecrow was still as terrifying as ever. There was no surprise, though, Every town seemed to have an old man who terrified the youths, and somehow the name Jenkins was inexorably linked to that station. She renumerated on the arcane nature of Jenkins' curse as she approached her destination, a modest hut on the outskirts of town, isolated from the other buildings, with a small storage shed across the road. She dismounted and tied her horse to the nearest hitching post, then strode up to the door, only hesitated for a few seconds before wrapping firmly in the wood. Composing herself and standing tall as clanks and footsteps came from inside, followed by the door swinging inward to reveal shorter human, eyes staring into her chest for a moment before his head tilted up far enough to find her eyes. Aladrail peered down at the man before her. He certainly looked different than the last time the day had met. His black hair had started to streak with grey, and worry lines were carved into his brow. But the spark in those beady eyes was the same as she remembered. Xavier, it's good to see you again. Spirits above you have aged. I always forget how short lumen lifespans are. How are you doing? Xavier looked up at her, tilting his head from side to side and squinting through the darkness, before his eyes widened in surprise and his face lit up with a joyous grin. Aladrell, my god, I haven't seen you since that summer you brought me to meet your family and got conscripted. Uh, this is that war with the orcs over. She gave a titling laugh and patted him on the shoulder. Oh, I've missed your human view and things. No, no, the, the war is still going. It's only been 30 years. I'm on leave for the next five years, though. You seem to have done quite well for yourself since I left. From what I hear, you're quite a popular amongst the locals. Xavier sighed, reminiscing for a moment. Uh, this has really been thirty years. Uh, it feels just like yesterday when we found that abandoned temple. And you certainly haven't lost any of your charm, showing up unannounced in the dead of night, just like old times. I'm afraid I'm not famous for the sort of mischief we used to get into. I just shared a few of my more menial inventions with them, and they keep my larder stocked. Oh, and speaking of which... Just in time for my first test of my latest creation. Come in, we have so much to catch up on. He motioned to Eladrell inside, then shouted out the corner to the house. Bring me a chair. The two of them walked into the house, and Eladrell looked around to the crowded walls, packed with shelves, which were packed in turn with both books and mechanical devices of all sizes, cast in tin, bronze, iron, even a couple in gold. Some were displayed proudly on their own shelves, others were in heaps or served as paperweights and bookends, or, in the case of one particularly large metal contraption, as a doorstop. Xavier motioned proudly at the bread box sized contraption sitting on his workbench, the only tidy surface in the entire room. There it is, the tool that'll turn even the most clumsiest oaf into a master chef, the contraption that will clang, 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 clang. The device on the workbench let out a deafening series of clangs and ringing bells, and started vibrating across the table. Alla Drail quickly clamped her hands over her sensitive ears as Xavier whirled back to yank up the lever to stop the noise, before rushing over to the stove and using a spoon to quickly fish an egg out of the boiling pot of water. And voila, one, hopefully, a perfectly boiled egg. The human beamed up at her, and Aladrail stared at him dumbfounded. 
blinked several times as she slowly lowered her hands from her ears, before abruptly doubling over laughter. <laughs> oh, spirits above, you would subject yourself to that racket just for a well-cooked egg. That's just adorable. Xavier frowned and gesticulated with the egg as he indignantly replied. It's not adorable, it's revolutionary. One of these days, in every kitchen, would be an end to chalky yolks, an end to rubbery whites. Perhaps the bells need a little bit of fine tuning. Other Drell stopped paying attention as the door opened, and she looked up to see a six-foot-tall humanoid of solid metal trump through the doorway, dragging a wooden chair behind it. It was almost entirely featureless, with a flat surface where its base should be, broken by a single blue gem in the center. Xavier, sensing he had lost his audience, looked around, saw the new arrival, and promptly strode over. No, Dabbit, carry the chair, don't drag it. Put it over by the table. He looked at the table, realized that there was about an inch of various papers and mechanical bits covering it, and the chair, and added, and then clean off the table and chair. But it all... He looked around the room and, coming to terms with the fact that there wasn't a single remaining clear surface, pointed to a far corner of the floor. Just pile it over there. He turned back to Aladrail and motioned to the chair as it was brought over. Come sit, perhaps Xavier, excellent egg timing device, isn't that interesting to you? But I'm sure... He paused at her deadpan face. Really? Nothing. Excellent. Egg of excellent, because it, it, it makes eggs. Aladrail sat in the chair the golem had brought and answered in a flat tone, face betraying no amusement. I get the yolk. I just don't think it was funny. They stared at each other for a few moments, neither so much as twitching, before simultaneously breaking out into chuckles. Xavier sitting down in the nearly clean chair as the golem went to work at the table. But really... It's a nice device. It's just that there's already a spell for that. Her eyes sputtered half-closed as she muttered a few words and snapped her fingers, a steaming egg falling out of nowhere into her hand, where she quickly tossed it to the left and right as it called. That's all well and good, Xavier replied. But if you get a couple syllables wrong, you've got an angry demon rooster in your hand instead of an egg. Besides, it's not like every innkeeper has the ability for magic. But whatever. Maybe you'll be impressed by my greatest invention. He stood up and walked towards the shelf, fetching a bronze sphere, an iron cube. Actually, I was more interested in your golem friend there. It's rare to see one. Where did you find him? Xavier looked over his shoulder at the golem. Oh, that. Uh, actually, I found him hidden in a room of that temple we discovered. Useful for grabbing things sometimes, but not much else. Uh, I call him dumb as a brick brock. I suppose this is Gollum I've heard the villagers talking about. You have him help out with the crops. Xavier shook his head. No, no, Brock just helps me out. The villagers just have some of my copies. Now let me show you this. If you put down the block on one piece and roll the ball over to them. Now the drail stared at her mouth open for a second before interrupting. Wait, copies. Are you saying you made more Gollums? But the secret of Gollum making has been lost for a millennia. How? Xavier stopped mid-sentence and raised an eyebrow. Well, I, I just made an extra gem and body and then etched the runes onto its face. What? An extra gem? You copied the golem's artificial soul? Impossible. Our top mages have been searching for the ritual for years without success. The human looked confused for a moment, then nodded. Oh, you mean the power core? He snickered and cocked his head a bit. It's not an artificial soul, it's just a gem etched with ruins to collect and store and channel natural mana. It was a bit tricky to get the first ones right, but I don't have to worry about that now. Aladrell stared at him for a moment before hesitantly asking, And what in the Thirteen Hells are the ruins? Xavier snickered and crossed his arms. Come on, stop playing around, you're an elf, the great masters of magic, you have to know about runes. Every time you cast a spell, you make a self-perpetuating chain of them that ripples out and you have a desired effect. But in theory, uh, I, I wouldn't know how to observe them floating in the air, but anyways, have you uh, never looked closely at magic artifacts? The gnomes noticed them centuries ago, but none of them were able to sit still long enough to figure out what they meant. He sat there with a smug look in his face before returned to incredulity. Wait, you're serious? 
and the trail slowly started to calm down as to reassert reality. I, uh, there have been some scholars who have theorized about more basic forms of magic, so, uh, put your, uh, n not manner, I suppose, but uh, you put your energy directly into the gem and, uh, bend it to your will? Uh, that, that, that makes a surprising amount of sense. Well, uh, Sort of. I mean, it takes a little bit of work to get all the lines just right, but I've got columns to do that for me now. And just like that, the fragments of a sensible world Aladrell had scotch-taped around herself flew apart once more. Columns! Columns making more columns! But columns can't do magic. They never have been able to do magic. Xavier frowned and hefted the bronze ball that he was still holding. Neither can I! It's just scratching a few lines on a crystal and some stone. Besides, all it gets you is a useless hunk of rock. I mean, look at this. He handed the egg to the golem, standing at attention in the corner. Peel it! The golem took the egg and pinched the shell, fingers crushing right through and scooping the portion of white out. After a few moments, the shell was gone, but so was the white with some of the yolk. Xavier sighed and pointed to the mess on the floor. Now clean that up. He turned back to Aladrail and continued. See? Useless. I had to make extra tiny ones just to get them to have enough control to carve the runes. Besides, you're missing the point. He set the bronze ball back down on the floor and pressed a button. If you put down the sphere and activate it, it rolls directly towards the block, even if it's a little, little slope. Amazing, eh? The ball did indeed roll until it touched the block. Xavier looked up with a gleeful smile to see Aladrell's jaw still hanging open. Xavier continued, Okay, I'll admit they're useful, but this one brews good tea and can cook eggs if you tell him when to take them out, and the villagers really like the others, even that they take care of most of my day and day needs. That's why I've got a cave full of them. They make life easier, but... Look at this other thing. It spins when you sit it out in the sun. Pretty slow, but I bet if it was big enough, it could replace a one. And the drill interrupted once more, this time with an uncertain voice. Wait, 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 wait. A, a, a cave full of them. Just how many of these columns do you have? Xavier paused with the mouth open, then cocked his head and stroked his chin. Hmm, well, uh, a little over a year ago, I put two makers down in the cave... One with orders to make more golems, and the other with orders to make more golem makers. I've been checked on them since, uh, that week. He yanked a sheet of paper and pencil from a pile and scribbled on the back, muttering to himself, One every two days, quadratic growth carries seven. He looked down at his work and paled, then got up and walked towards the door. Um, I'm pretty sure my math is off. We should go check on them ourselves. He walked outside and motioned for Aladrell to follow. He hurried over to the shed and opened it, grabbing a lighting and a lantern before descending the spiral clay steps down into the cave below, followed by an increasingly panicked elf. As she reached the bottom of the stairs and looked out into the cave beyond, he sighed and faced Palm. Damn it all! The math was right! Aladrail pushed past him and into the dimly lit cavern and gasped. The cave stretched as far as the lantern light reached, and even with her sharp Albert eyes, she couldn't see the end of it. And every foot was packed with golems, all working. Large ones were scraping the walls and forming the rocks into clay into new bodies, while finger-sized ones gathered quartz crystals from the rubble and carved minuscule figures onto the stones and the faces. How many are there? He sighed and muttered, Fucking quadratic growth, making my life harder! He spoke louder in reply. Somewhere around 20,000. I'm not certain exactly how fast they multiply. He shouted out into the cave. That's enough. Stop what you're doing. Back to muttering, he stared. Damn it. What am I supposed to do with all these? Kind of feel bad for ordering them all off a glove. And the looked out over the veritable army of stone figures and her eyes went from panicked to gleeful. In an instant, wait, 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 this could be perfect. The columns are good at combat, right? Xavier looked back at her in confusion. I mean, they're plenty strong, and the local lumberjacks love them since they can fell a tree in just a few strokes, but uh, his eyes widened and he broke into a grin. But if they do that to a tree, imagine what they'll do to an orc. <laughs> yeah, do, do you think these could really affect the war? Aladrell turned to look at the horde of statues before her, now motionless. 
I don't know for sure, but there are old stories of a handful of war golems raising entire cities. These look a little less polished, but uh, 20,000 is usually half of our current army. If they fight half as well as the regular soldiers, the war could be over within a couple years. Xavier looked up at his childhood friend, standing beside him. If it'll end it within five, that's good enough for me. He turned to stare out at over the sea of useless rocks with the black faces, and his hand silently grasped Aladrail's in a dim light for a few long moments. Ah, I'm gonna have to take this to the king, aren't I? There's gonna be so much paperwork. Maybe I can create a device to fill out. He was cut off sharply as Aladrail salvaged the tender moment with a kiss. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click, click, click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just quickly like to give thanks to our tier 5 members. Elithia, Barky, Pudicule, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albarden Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, and Lord Azrakal.